All right, let's not waste more time while this laptop recovers. So um, a very quick one. Uh, Risk v has been positioning itself over the last year and a half as AI-enabled, uh, just like everything has been positioning itself as AI-enabled. And I had a presentation on that topic at the last Risk v Summit. So uh, for those who don't know me, um, I'm, I've been around Risk v for about four or five years now. Uh, I'm both a board member there, uh, representing the strategic membership tier, and I'm also the vice chair of the technical steering committee. And in that role have been driving our matrix extensions for the last year or so. And the goal of Risk v really is to, um, to fill one big gap here that uh, is related to vendor lock-in on AI and ML. So Risk v is really differentiated through the fact that it's being an open standard, uh, royalty-free to adopt, uh, free to differentiate on your own chip implementations, uh, and sharing one common underpinning ecosystem in terms of software. And that allows domain-specific customization. Now, with domain-specific customization, um, a very natural extension of Risk v really is AIML because that's an area where you can do tensor processing, where you can do your matrix multiplications, and any type of processing as part of that domain-specific acceleration. And all of that driven out of our regular ecosystem. So the, the consequence out of this is that we've seen a number of wide adoptions recently uh, around Risk v and in AI. So Meta has announced their accelerator, basically building their TPU on top of Risk v or integrating it with a Risk v CPU. Uh, Google has done the same with their TPUs put onto or integrated with Sci-5 uh, CPU cores. And similarly, uh, Stream Computing, a Chinese vendor that is trying to compete with NVIDIA in the, the Chinese market, is doing exactly the same. They are taking Risk v cores, they are taking their own matrix acceleration units and TPUs and putting that onto AI accelerator cards. So what we're seeing is uh, a common picture emerging where Risk v is a stable base ISA in order to put the domain-specific acceleration functionality that you need for AI on top. And you're just getting your 64-bit ISA, you get your basic instructions out of it. You get your memory model, your MMUs, all of that is there and an operating system, a tool chain, and you're just adding that specific addition there. But that is what's been happening pre-standard. So this is what's been happening over the last two and a half years uh, and is leading into tape out. So Google is taping out, Meta is taping out, stream computing is shipping in volume. And there's a couple more companies entering that space as well, adopting Risk v So Esperanto was one of the earlier ones, uh, having plenty of Risk v cores going into many core. Uh, Revos has announced that they've shifted from uh, data analytics over to AIML. Uh, Softgo has adopted Sci-5 cores in their, latest, uh, in their latest chip. So 16 general purpose Sci-5 cores, plus four of their inference engines, so basically vector acceleration. Uh, in order to build AI to achieve, well, I think about 32, 40 tops uh, on a 12 nanometer process. And the goal for us at, at Risk v International, the goal that we're having on the standard side, on the community side, is really to change the way that, that AI ML is being done. So right now, this is all software defined. So this is an opportunity for Risk v we have the tool chains, we have MLIR, we can compile down to whatever architecture we have and whatever chips. And by using a shared base instruction set, we can just accelerate the, the innovation while not having to um, retarget to, to every chip independently. So the vision for Risk v today on the standard side is to standardize these AI extensions to the point where you can just put the microarchitectural model underneath it in the compiler and share 95, 98% of the infrastructure as you're moving between different vendor chips. And all of that having the custom instruction capability of our standards of efforts. 
So where that leaves us is really two different standards being developed. Um, this may sound somewhat crazy because ARM has a single matrix extension, uh, Intel has a single matrix extension, but RISC-V has decided to go with two different ones. And we're trying to bridge some of the fragmentation that would arise from that on the software side by having common performance primitives targeting both. And the history of the two is really we have the integrated matrix extension. That means we leverage what we have in vectors, we enhance that, don't add any new microarchitectural state, and get a times two to times four benefit. Um, the target for that is clearly people that already have IP cores and want to move forward leveraging those and keeping those alive. The other side, and that's the more interesting one, is the attached matrix extension. Consider this an accelerator core on the chip. This isn't even tied to one core, one AME unit, but there could be multiple shared by, by, by or one shared by multiple cores. So you don't necessarily have a one-to-one -one relationship because they'll have pretty massive microarchitectural resources. So very large tile registers, matrix registers, their own memory ports. And that one is targeting AIML on the data center, uh, high performance inference on the, on the network edge and HPC. So this is for people that are doing something new around AIML acceleration, building on RISC-V, and not those that just want to augment the core with a little bit of matrix capabilities as with IME. So, where does that leave us? Um, given that we're on a 10 minute segment, I'll just try to wrap up quickly and have all of you join RISC-V and come to the meetings. Um, so we're trying to address all of the market segments with these new standards and build one common software ecosystem on top. So RISC-V has matured a lot from being very much hardware driven to being uh, an ecosystem solution. So we standardize the ISA but we also provide directions on the software side and provide specifications on how a common software layer can look. And that gives us the two different solutions with vectors plus a natural progression towards IME and also with AME for a very high performance, very high end solution uh, that can be targeted with similar common and shared software solutions. And on AME, we're going beyond just doing a bit of matrix processing. So AME is really the RISC-V answer to anything that's matrix, tensor and beyond, so that we can very quickly do the computations necessary for AI, both on the central office as well as on the network edge. And I can't repeat it often enough, the goal here is unified enablement. So I'm coming from a software background, from a compiler background, and there's more and more of us showing up in RISC-V uh, where the traditional topic was rather how do we decode this instruction and how many bits do we have left in the opcode. But now this is more about the application and that's really where it's shining for AI. And that said, um, I don't want to take up more of your time given that I already started five minutes late waiting for the moderator to call me in. Um, I can only say find me either in a break or uh, we have a RISC-V booth downstairs. The VP of Technology for RISC-V International is here, Andrea Gallo, uh, or join RISC-V either as an individual member or even better with your organization and attend the standardization meetings. We are really trying to change things here in terms of how software is being built and trying to create an ecosystem that is free of vendor lock-in. Thank you.